when you get your heart, uh, you're going to see it's in the pericardium. And so the first thing you want to do is look at the pericardium. And uh, uh, you can see there's quite a lot of fat on the pericardium. Uh, they were fattening this sheet up, sheep up. So we're going to have to uh, cut this off of the heart before we can work on the heart itself. There's already a little opening in the pericardium right here. So we're just going to cut into that. And uh, scissors work pretty well for that. So I'm just cutting uh, the pericardium open. And you can see the inside lining of the pericardium now and see how smooth that lining is. You might remember that's the parietal pericardium. And you might also remember that on the surface of the heart itself is the visceral pericardium. And normally there's just a little bit of lubricating fluid between the two layers so that heart can move in that cavity without any friction. It's nice and slippery. But we're going to have to cut this off. And so we just cut it off uh, right about this area here. See it's coming off here. There. There's the pericardium. And again, this is the smooth parietal pericardium. And over here is the smooth visceral pericardium. So we'll put this to the side. And now we're going to look at the heart itself. And we want to look at the outside of the heart and uh, look at the plumbing of the heart. Uh, this is about the same size as your heart, by the way. Uh, there's a little bit of extra tissue on top here that we can get rid of. And we can just trim some of this off to make it a little easier. There, this is, we can just throw that out. And now it's a little easier to see the plumbing of the heart. So the first thing I like to find when I'm looking at the heart is I like to find the pulmonary trunk, which is right here off the front. So if you can see this, this vessel right here, uh, and this is the vessel that the right ventricle pumps blood to the lungs through, and it's got a pretty thick wall because it's an artery. And if I stick my finger into the pulmonary trunk, you can see it goes into the right ventricle, which is right here. And when I pinch the right ventricle, I notice it's got a pretty thin wall. You can see that. So again, pulmonary trunk, and this is uh, how what the right ventricle pumps blood out of uh, to the lungs. And again, try your fingers. If you, if you stick your finger into the pulmonary trunk, it will wind up in the right ventricle. That tells me, when I find the pulmonary trunk, that tells me this is the front side of the heart. Backside doesn't have this big uh, artery coming off of it. So I know because I see the pulmonary trunk, this is the front side of the heart. And that helps me get the heart in the right orientation. So this has got to be the front side. This has got to be the right side over here. And this has got to be the left side. And again, if I pinch the right side, I can see it's got a pretty thin wall. Uh, if I look behind the pulmonary trunk, there's another big artery right there. That's called the aorta. And if I stick my finger into the aorta, which is right there, it winds up in the left ventricle. So my finger's now over here in the left ventricle. And uh, you might remember the uh, left ventricle pumps blood out to the body through the aorta, which is right there. Uh, if I pinch the left ventricle, uh, it's got a much thicker wall. And that's because it 
pumps with so much more power than the, the right ventricle. So we have the two big arteries. They're the first uh, big vessels you want to find. And to repeat that, uh, right at the front is the pulmonary trunk. And that's what the right ventricle pumps out of. And then right behind it, right there, is the aorta. And that's what the left ventricle pumps out of. And this is the front of the heart, uh, the right ventricle, the left ventricle. There's some coronary arteries that run right down the boundary between the two sides, this side and this side. And by the way, uh, my father died because of a blockage to his coronary artery right about there. This is what we call the anterior descending branch, and that's where my father died. And that's something I want to show you uh, in lab today, a little bit more detail. Let's take a look at the atria. You might remember that the heart has got two ventricles and two atria, and pictures make you think the atria are big, but that's a lie. Uh, here are the atria of the heart. They're very small, really, so I'm going to cover up the two atria. Do you still see the heart? Of course you do, because the heart is made up of the ventricles, and uh, pictures make you think atria are just as big as the ventricles, and as you can see, that's not correct. Atria really, really are small, especially compared to the ventricles. We've been looking at the front side of the heart. Now we're going to flip it over, and here's the back side. And uh, notice that there are no big arteries coming right off the back side of the heart the way we see on the front side. So again, looking for this is the way to find the front side. But on the back side, we can find the veins of the heart. So right here uh, is a vein. This is where blood comes back to the right side of the heart. And it's got a thin wall because it's a vein, so it's a low pressure. This is the, uh, the opening for the superior vena cava coming back to the heart from above the heart, and I'm going to stick my finger in, and it goes into the right atrium. I'm going to take my finger now and work it through like this, and you can see my finger is coming out the opening to another big vein coming from below the heart called the inferior vena cava, and both the inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava bring blood back to the heart into the right atrium of the heart. Over on the left side of the heart, there's a hole here into the left atrium. That's where the blood returned from the lungs through the pulmonary veins, but they kind of got cut off. So that's where the pulmonary veins uh, came in, and you can see if I stick my finger into that hole, it goes into the left atrium of the heart. So again, to recap the plumbing and the outside, uh, you can look for the pulmonary trunk that tells you this is the front of the heart, and you can pinch and feel this has got to be the right side because it's got a thin wall. This has got to be the left side. It's got a thick wall. And then remember, the atria are really quite small, and it's the ventricles that make the heart. And then behind the pulmonary trunk, remember, there's the aorta which pumps blood from the left ventricle out to the body. And then if we turn the heart around and look at the back side, uh, you can find the veins. And so right here, if you look in the left side, you'll see the opening for the uh, superior vena cava. And if you stick your finger in, it winds up in the uh, right atrium. If you keep poking your finger through, you come out the opening for the inferior vena cava. And then over on the left side is the opening for the pulmonary veins that are bringing blood back to the heart from the lungs into the left atrium, which is here. So we've done the outside structures of the heart. Now we're ready to take a look at the inside, and we want to take a look at both the right side and the left side, and the easiest way to do that 
is to take your scissors and cut along the side of the heart. Not, not down the middle, but along the side. We're going to do that on both sides, and we're going to start with the right side. So we're just going to take the scissors, stick them in here, cut the right ventricle open all along its length. And we're looking into the right ventricle. And take a look at how thick the wall is of the right ventricle. You can see it's not very thick. And then right here you see parts of the right atrioventricular valve. You see some chordae, tendinii, the heart strings. And you can see, if you, if you use your finger, you can find the little flaps that are like little parachutes. Like there's one on my finger right there. You can see so they, they're very delicate looking, little, little parachute-like flaps. Uh, and then right here you can see some papillary muscles. I'm going to trim this so we can see a little better. So you can see right there a papillary muscle that the chordae tendinii are attached to. And this one has got three uh, little parachutes. It's got one there it's got one there, and it's got one there. I know you probably can't see them, but, uh, but uh, they're there. And so we call this one the tricuspid valve. It's the right AV valve. It's got three little parachutes, so the tricuspid. Uh, so that's the right side, the right ventricle. Let's uh, go over to the left side now, and uh, we're going to open it up along the side. So I'm going to start here at the tip, which is called the apex of the heart. I'm going to cut there. This is taking more cutting because it's much thicker wall. Let's see if I got through. Almost. And you can see how much thicker the wall is on the left side of the heart. It pumps with so much more power than the right side of the heart. And then right here you can see the uh, uh, left atrioventricular valve, and it's got two parachutes. It's got one here, it's got one there. It's also got uh, chordae tendinii, the heart strings, and the papillary muscles that the chordae tendinii attach to. So because it's got two parachutes, two cusps, it's called the bicuspid valve. It's also called the mitral valve. Three names for that one valve, the left atrioventricular, bicuspid, mitral valve. So we've seen the, the left ventricle, and again, thick wall, left AV, bicuspid, mitral, <laughs> and then we've seen the right ventricle, thin wall with the uh, right AV or tricuspid valve, we haven't seen a semilunar valve yet, so let's take a look at a semilunar valve. And the way we can do that is we can go back to the left side, and I'm going to take my finger and show you how blood is pumped out of the heart. My, my finger is going behind that valve, behind that left AV valve. See how it's going like this? That's the way the blood leaves the heart to go out to the body when it's being pumped out. So watch how my finger is coming out of the aorta. There's the aorta right there. And my finger is coming out of the aorta just like the blood does when it's pumped out by the left ventricle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut everything that's above my finger. I'm going to take the scissors and cut everything that's above my finger. I'm going to take my finger out first though. So I'm going to do this. Just have to open the scissors wide, cut everything that was above my finger. What I'm doing is I'm cutting open the aorta. So this is the aorta, and it's now cut open. This is the left uh, ventricle, and here we have some of the left AV valve right over here. And I wanted to show you 
a semilunar valve. Remember, that's the other kind of valve. And it's made up of three little pockets. And there's a pocket here, and there's a pocket right there, and there's a third pocket right there. So three little pockets, and they catch the blood uh, that's trying to fall back into the heart when the ventricle relaxes. Um, and uh, when all three pockets fill, they block the opening. There's another semilunar valve over uh, at the opening to the uh, tricuspid valve as well. But here you can see the left semilunar valve, also called the aortic valve because it's right at the opening to the aorta. Uh, there's something else I wanted you to see. When we're looking here at the aorta, there's an opening, a hole, right here, just right above that uh, aortic valve. That's an opening right there. That's the opening into the left coronary artery. And then there's another opening, little hole, right over here. And that's the opening into the right coronary artery. So this is how the heart gets its own blood. Uh, blood comes into the heart itself to supply the heart through these two openings. And what I want you to, to notice is how small those openings are. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, a little bit of the connection to the coronary artery by taking this probe, and I'm going to insert the probe into the left coronary artery here, and now I'm going to work it in. And you can see this, this uh, probe, well, it's a little hard because it's full got fat over it, but the probe, the tip of the probe, maybe if I stick it out, see there it is, tip of the probe is sticking out of a coronary artery, and again, that is about the spot where my father died from a massive heart attack at the age of 62. He had a blockage right there, high up in the anterior descending branch of the left coronary artery, and that cut off the blood supply to his left ventricle. Uh, so when you're looking at, at the coronary arteries in your, in your sheep's heart, I want you to just think about how small they are. I moved it so now it's, the probe is in another coronary artery right there. And if we take the scissors and snip that open, and, and run the, the probe out like this, you can then see that coronary artery, uh, at least when you're doing your sheep, you can, you can see the coronary artery. And I want you to be impressed with how incredibly small that coronary artery is. And that explains why I don't know, Eugen, if you can get a view of that mm -hmm. or not. Uh, that explains why four out of ten of us are going to die just like my father did with those coronary arteries uh, getting blocked. Uh, now this is a beautifully wide open coronary artery because this sheep didn't have any heart disease. Uh, now I wish mine looked like that, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they don't. Uh, because of my age and the American lifestyle, I'm pretty sure that mine are, are to some degree filled in. Um, and again, it's worth seeing that because it really brings home how easy it is to block those up and, uh, and have a, a fatal heart attack. Well, I hope you are going to enjoy your uh, heart dissection today. Uh, it may be the only opportunity in your career to actually dissect a heart in this way. So please take advantage of it. Please study it. Uh, again, how often do you have a chance to see what has a four out of 10 chance of killing you? Uh, it's kind of a rare opportunity. And uh, uh, let me know if I can help you as you're doing your dissection.